So first we're going to look at position. Position is always measured relative to some reference point. So here the reference point will be 0, 0. This red dot, we would say it's 5 meters to the right of the reference point, or just 5 meters right. We could also say positive 5 meters right. Now this blue dot, it's to the left of the reference point, so we would say it's 5 meters left, or negative 5 meters. Now notice that a very important point here is that positive and negative signs in this case tell us only the direction. Now distance is similar in some ways and different in others. Um, the distance of the red dot compared to the reference point is just 5 meters. And the same is true for the blue dot. We'd also say that the distance is 5 meters. In this case, for distance, direction is not important. So obviously, those have some differences to them, position and um, distance. So a vector is something that has magnitude and direction. So when we say something is 5 meters left, we are using a vector by saying by giving a magnitude how much 5 meters and saying the direction as left. Also, we can give the direction as a negative sign. If it's to the left, we would say it's negative. So 5 meters negative would mean 5 meters to the left. A scalar is any kind of physical measurement that we make that only has magnitude. It tells us how much, but not what direction. Displacement is the change in position. So let's say the red dart starts at the positive 10 meter mark, and then later on becomes negative, goes to the negative 2 meter mark sometime later. We'd say that the displacement is negative 12 meters. So I went here from 10 all the way over here to negative 2. So the displacement is negative 12 meters. Whenever we calculate a change in position or any change in values in physics, we always go final minus initial. In this case, final position minus initial position. The final position is negative 2 meters. It was right there, and we're going to subtract a positive 10 meter value, so that gives us negative 12 meters. So what that means is we are now negative 12 meters away from our original starting point, which was 10 meters. So the question there is this, is displacement a vector or a scalar? Well, it's a vector because distance is important. Velocity is calculated by taking the change in the position over a certain amount of time, and here's the equation. So notice the displacement on top and the change in time on the bottom. So final position minus initial position divided by final time minus initial time. So using the similar example, we started here, our initial position was at 10 meters, our final position was at negative 2 meters. So to plug it into our equation, our final position is negative 2 meters minus our initial position, which was at a positive 10 meter point, but we're subtracting it. Our final time was 2 seconds. Our initial time was 0 seconds. So we get negative 12 meters divided by 2 seconds, or negative 6 meters per second. So the units for velocity are in meters per second. And we're going to say that for this example, the velocity was negative 6 meters per second, or 6 meters per second to the left. So velocity, in this case, is a vector because direction is important. We have to say to the left, or we have to include the negative sign, which means to the left. Now finally, speed is the total distance over the time. So this is the calculation of speed. So um, in a similar situation, let's say we start here at the 10 meter mark and we end up at the 12 meter, at the, I'm sorry, the two meter, negative two meter mark, our distance is 12 meters. Notice that we're not putting a negative sign there. We're not saying it's to the left. It really doesn't matter to us. And we're going to divide that by 2 seconds. So that gives us a value of 6 meters per second. And there is no direction to it. So speed, in this case, is a scalar.
Motion maps are probably the most important tool for understanding kinematics. Let's look at a quick example right now. So here's our moving man. Notice that the moving man started at the 10 meter position right over here and moved towards a negative 2 meter position in a time of 2 seconds. When we draw our motion maps to represent this type of motion, we always start off with a position line, like this blue line here. We put an X there to mark that it's the position line. All of our motion maps will start with one of these position lines, and they always start at the reference point, or zero meters, and always point in the positive direction, which in this case is to the right. Our first vector that we'll draw is the very first velocity vector. So here's this black vector. It started from his initial position over here at 10 meters and it points to the left because that's the direction he was going in and it represents one second. So he went from the 10 meter mark to the 4 meter mark in one second. So each velocity vector represents a certain amount of time. In this case, one second. This is the second velocity vector that shows the man still moving six meters per second during the second second of his motion. So during this time, he went from the four meter mark to the negative two meter mark, all the while going six meters per second. If we want to say at the end of his movement that he remains at rest at his final position for three seconds, we would use dots to show that. So each of these dots represent him just standing there for a total of three seconds. So to review his movement, for he went six meters per second during this first second right here. Then during his second second, he was still moving six meters per second to the left, and the third second, he um, stayed at that position at negative two meters, at the third second, at the fourth second, and at the fifth second, he stayed at the same spot. So one of the things you should notice is that we always draw any motion that overlaps above the previous motion.